relentless noon sun blazed upon a vast expanse of rolling sand dunes. Screams and anguished cries were punctuated or drowned out by the occasional thunderous roar of magic or otherworldly beings. Two kingdoms were engaged in a fierce battle for supremacy. On this unforgiving landscape, the kingdom of Alma, donned in their thick plate armor, had invaded the small tribal kingdom of Dravia. They coveted Dravia's rare resources and their prosperous trade cities. A Dravian tribesman of Islabal had spotted the convoy of Almond soldiers. He had managed to rally his clan and one other, Islamar, to slow down the Almond march. They used hit and run tactics, but as the Almonds made their way across the massive sandfields, the clans no longer had the cover to maintain their strategy. They were forced to wait for the other clans, as the Almonds drew ever closer to their capital city. As the twelve tribes of Dravia and the capital city's army moved to join the battle, the tribes that were already there had a tough choice to make. Do they retreat to the capital, or do they challenge the Almonds, outnumbered, in an environment wholly their own? They decided on the latter. To even the odds, they devoted their clan's wishes to summoning abominations from other realms that they could only control for a brief time. They would send these grotesqueries charging at the Almond line with reckless abandon. They would slaughter whoever was unfortunate enough to be near them before being put down. As more and more of the clans showed up, the battle shifted into an all-out war. A plethora of impromptu tents punctuated the battlefield's periphery. On one side of this tumultuous tableau, with tents of various colors, the Dravians stood united for the first time in decades. Their attire, a harmonious blend of colorful hues, flowed like a river between the tents. Their wishes swirled in a mesmerizing choreography, spellcasting as they danced in swaying, hypnotic motions. Their gold chains bounced in rhythm, creating a soft ringing song. Men and women, their garments billowing like silken banners in the desert breeze, intermittently united to invoke powerful summonings. They conjured forth the grotesque and the shrill. Exhausted, they slumped to the ground as the unholy minions skittered towards the front line, their own soldiers fleeing his path. In stark contrast with the Kingdom of Alma, their formations were ones of rigid divisions, sharply demarcated. Standard bearers separated the immaculate black and gold tents from the fighting. They flew the flags of the houses of their nobles, but next to every house flew the, their kingdoms. In the middle of their tents sat a larger one, more adorned than the others. It proudly displayed the might of a king. Nearby, a circle of wizards in obsidian robes flung spells of devastation that spiraled onto the battlefield. At the back of the sprawling Gravian camp, a freshly arrived caravan is unloading its goods beneath the merciless midday sun. Days had dragged on since the initial clash, and this caravan was the last of their reinforcements, likely the last resupply for the meager camp. Weariness itched deep lines into the soldiers' faces. Had it not been for the Almond Force's heavy armor and the scorching sun, they might have already been overrun. It took time to gather the nomadic tribes of Dravia, and the Almond's unpreparedness had bought them that time. Unfortunately for Dravia, though, the Almonds learned pretty quickly how to avoid inflicting their own men with heat stroke. They adopted the use of magically cool stones and reduced their reliance on their signature bulky metal armor. Beside the caravan stood a large tent, quickly erected upon their arrival, and uniquely guarded by chainmail clad sentries, a rare sight in the Dravian camp. The guards brandished large metal halberds of extraordinary length. Leah, a tan girl in a simple one piece dress wearing a large steel collar, approached the entrance of the tent, carrying a silver tray of food. The guard at the entrance greeted her with a nod. She returned the gesture solemnly. Then she was joined by two guards on both sides of her. The guard opened the tent's entrance, and Leah walked in with her escort.